All right, everybody, welcome back to Binary Adventure. So as promised in the last video, I'm now going to go over how to do, just look at some basic information about the binary that we're working with here. Um, and in fact, arguably, I would have usually done this first, but I know that some people who, you know, were scrambling around looking for tutorials on uh, Rad Air, they may just need to dive right into some disassembly real quick. So that's the reason why I, I kind of did the exciting stuff first, so to speak. So, uh, but this is still exciting. We're going to be looking at uh, a lot of information that we can see, not necessarily code related uh, information, doing like a basic sort of uh, once over on the binary um, using Rad Air's tool suite. So for example, um, some of you, if you've been, if you've ever done any uh, Windows analysis, may be familiar with a tool called PE Studio. And it's used by a lot of malware researchers uh, to see things like the imports, the exports, uh, you know, the, the, the architecture, the binary, things like that. So we already covered imports and exports in the last videos, but uh, let's just see what else we can find out about the binary. And then uh, there's also a string utility too, which uh, is pretty useful as well. And we'll take a look at that probably in the next video. So um, what I'm actually gonna do, and I'm gonna leave uh, Rad Air. So we don't actually need to be inside of Rad Air to do what we're gonna do. Um, you can do it from inside Rad Air using those I commands, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave Rad Air. So I'm gonna hit Q, uh, hit Q again, and then type Q, and I'm gonna exit. So we're out of Rad Air now. And um, we're gonna look at that letter frequencies program once again, but this time we're gonna use a program called R uh, Rabin2, or uh, Rad Air Binary2, basically, right? And uh, we're gonna run that program and actually the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna, we're gonna man page it because I wanna show you how to get information in case you have a question that's not answered in the video. So we go out here and um, it get, basically gives us a list of things we could do. So uh, we could do, we could show information about a specific address as shown right here. Uh, we could list sub binaries, we could, uh, we could set an architecture, we could set bits. So you could actually edit the file with this, not just view it. Um, and so let's just say, so show binary info. So you could see here how it says I capital I and R2. So like I said, a lot of these commands or all of them can actually be called from within Rad Air, but we can uh, do it outside of Rad Air using this utility, which could be useful. Um, you could output the, the data in JSON. Um, there's a lot of things you could do with this. You're gonna get, you'll be able to get strings from this. You're gonna be able to get imports and exports, the header header fields, um, lots of info here that you have access to. So let's just go ahead and let's go back up and see what we wanna do here. So we're gonna do dash, capital I for show binary info first, okay? So we're gonna do grab into dash capital I and then letter frequencies, okay? Check this out. So um, architecture is x86, the size is uh, 11,004 bytes. Binary type elf, 64 bit. Uh, it has a stack canary, so this is useful for security analysis, right? Um, Elf64 is the class, um, and then we have, it's Little Andean. The language uh, it detected was C, that was used to program this binary. Um, here we have the machine. We have an operating system for Linux. NX true, another very useful thing for security. Uh, you know, non -ex a non-executable stack is set um, and then pick is also true position independent code so um, it'll load and randomize the uh, base address right um, so th those are all very useful things to know doing security research because maybe we want to change some of these things maybe you want to turn NX off or you want to turn pick off or something like that so you can get that general information um, by just doing that so let's just do already been to without anything passed and see what happens um, so what it does is it just gives us a help. Um, let's do, see what else we want to do here from our menu. 
let's do, so you can get the address of main here. You can, uh, so if this was C++, you could do look at uh, constructors and destructors, you could look at classes. Let's look at the header, let's, let's look at the header fields, okay? So um, the header fields is gonna be an abbreviated version of what like, uh, you know, a header parsing program like O and O editors templates will do, or uh, again, like PE Studio or something will parse out, uh, you know, uh, PE file headers on Windows. This will do the same thing. Uh, so let's do RIBIN dash H and then letter frequencies. So. It's given us the version, the entry point address. So let's do dash M to get the start address of main. So that's the start address of main right there. And then I believe this thing can also just dump strings from the binary too. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and guess that it's Z. We'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's probably like the string count or something. Let me try lowercase Z. So there we go. So this, this dumped the strings from the data section only data sections so let's see if i do see what happens if i do zz okay so it is hyphen zz so it's basically the same command you would use in red air but it's outside of red air and this gives us all the strings in the binary okay so if you just want to do some basic recon on this thing that's one way to do it now the second thing i'm going to show you the second utility that I'm going to show you is called RA find two. So we're going to do man RA find two. And uh, what this thing does is it fight, it finds byte patterns and files, but it also essentially uh, it'll allow you to search for strings. So let's say uh, a use case for this is you just wrote a program or your company wrote a program and you are trying to see which strings you guys have left in your program. Um, did you leave secrets in there? Did you leave uh, keys you shouldn't have left in there? Do you want to um, see what a reverse engineer can find out about your program um, by running strings on it? So the reason why this is useful is because um, if you just try to grep something, um, you're not going to get all the strings in a binary file that you would like. So um, just as a, as a practical example here, I'm going to clear the screen. Um, I could do uh, grep dot slash... Uh, letter frequencies. I can't remember if when you do it like this, you have to put the term after. Um, okay, so the term goes before. Right, so the word test doesn't appear in there. Um, so printf it does appear in there. There is a printf in there, but it's not really, it, this is, grep is not really made to search through binary files. So the good thing about uh, RA find is is that it's it's made to search through binary files, um, and so it does a better job at locating things. Now, what you would usually want to do um, inside of Linux, at least, or even on Windows, is you could run the strings command. So you could basically do strings dot slash letter frequencies. And then you could pipe that to grep, and then you could look for printf, right? And now it's going to show you that the, the printf. So maybe you want to look for secret. Secret. There is no secret in there, by the way. But um, so that's useful, but I believe by default, strings is only going to find you ASCII strings. Um, and uh, this RA find has a lot more customizations you can make. And additionally, RA find is probably better to use if you need to, to analyze a whole bunch of different files. Just run them through RA find rather than having to run it through uh, several different programs like this. So um, back to the man page here one more time. Let's see what we can do. So dash Z searches for all zero terminated strings. Um, dash A is useful because it only accepts aligned hits. So for example, if you, let's say you want to find strings that are only at a memory address that are aligned to like 16 bytes, 
or eight bytes or something like that. So you could specify dash a and write that. Um, so dash lowercase s search for a specific string. Dash uppercase s searches for a specific wide string. Um, so you can do multiple different types of strings there. Uh, you could do regex with dash e. Um, you could uh, so dash i basically identifies the file type. So it's almost like running file on the on the file. Um, you can carve files out of this. You can um, you could basically do a from and to address. So you could pick uh, you could pick specific sections of a binary to search through rather than through the entire binary, even though it does the whole binary by default. Um, so there's a lot of stuff you could do, but let's just let's just go as and uh, do ra find to dash lowercase s paridf dot slash letter uh, frequencies. So what it does is it spits out the addresses of uh, where those things are. So now you could go into like Red Air and look at these addresses and you'd see where it was. Um, let's look at, let's see if we can find anything else. No glibc. There's libc though. So lib libc occurs at these specific addresses. And what you could do is you could do a little bit of command line foo and um, the creator of uh, Rad Air wrote a little article that shows you how you could basically just use bash scripting and write a for loop um, and loop through every single one of these addresses and then use the uh, the Rad Air API or the, the command interface basically and essentially display everything too and get like a hex view. Um, in fact, I'll see if I can, I actually have the command here that I could show you um, really quick. To how, how, how you could do that. Just to give you a little bonus here. So I'm gonna start up Vim real quick and then I'm just gonna paste, uh, oops, I don't know what to do. Okay, I wanna paste it here. So that, you, with a command simple as this, um, so let's say you wanted to analyze uh, bin ls, you know, you basically whatever binary you wanna put, whatever binary you try to search. So in our case, this would be letter frequencies. So then you're just gonna say for address in ra find dash s, whatever you're looking for. So in our case, it would be like, you know, libc. Um, then it is going to uh, run that against our binary. And then it's going to send that data to red air two and it's going to tell it to out, give us an output of hex basically. And when this is done, what happens is, is it, it gets displayed all nicely um, in your terminal and it shows you not only where the data is, but it actually shows you the data. So um, if you want this, I'll put the link in the description. Uh, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, exit out of this now without saving. And so, Let's do uh, let's do a search now for. I don't think I have any wide strings in here, but we'll just do a, a wide string search as well. Yeah, I don't have any wide strings for that, but so this is really good for basically searching through binaries, looking for specific strings, looking for regex, trying to find any secrets or any other information that you may have left, uh, you know, accidentally left inside of the binary. So you could actually, uh, I think, you can get a list of strings from this too but you could also get a list of strings from the previous program. So there are some overlaps between some of these utilities. And the idea is that you can do uh, most or all of these things inside of Rad Air as well. Um, these are basically individual front ends to the different libraries that Rad Air uses uh, in its main you know, program. So, so that's what I wanted to show you today. Um, and let me take a look at what's going on next here. Um, so, the next thing we'll do is talk about patching uh, a binary. So uh, we'll go back into main rad air and we'll look at how to do that. And then uh, I'll also show you how to do to parse a header in rad air, which is actually pretty cool to do. So um, that will essentially, I'll show you right now actually, cause it's kind of related here. So what I'm gonna do is do R2-NN 
dot slash letter frequencies. And then uh, you do dash that in because what that does is it basically loads up these uh, header structures and applies them to the file. And so what I mean by that is now if we hit shift V and enter back into our visual mode and we go to visual mode here, you can see that uh, there's the elf header here and the elf p header. So that basically parsed that data for us. So I'm gonna hit Q to go back um, now. And then um, to in order to actually look at these headers, like you might do like a hex editor, like O and O editor or something, um, you could actually use the PF command. So it's so if you do PF dot, see it is showing me some of these that are available. And then what I can do here, see, there's the elf uh, sh, uh, elf s header, p header, and then uh, the actual elf header here. So, and it shows you like which members are actually available. So, if you want to actually parse that out so that it looks nicer, we could do pf dot elf header, and then at elf header. So, if you if you think about what's going on here, um, it's basically parsing the format. Um, you know, with this struct, the elf header struct at this memory address. And so if we hit enter here, there you go, you have a nice clean looking uh, version of those items from the elf header. So again, if I go back to visual mode and take a look at what's going on here, um, you can see that this is the very beginning of the file. The first thing that's there obviously is the elf header. And so when we're saying at elf header, we're saying at th this symbol right here. So. Um, so that's all for this video. In the next video, um, I will cover some of that other stuff uh, back in uh, Red Air. We're going to start working with um, patching binaries. So thanks for watching, and if you like this, don't forget to subscribe.